What's up, everyone? Welcome back to Pickleball's most coveted podcast. This is Inside Major League Pickleball, where we discuss all the scoops surrounding the hottest professional pickleball league in the game. That is Major League Pickleball. This week, we have an incredible guest, Teaser. You might know from this little tease, but... I'll intro him in a second. He's a player and owner for Major League Pickleball. We'll intro him in just a bit. But first, a quick shout out to our sponsors. We want to thank ProXR, the official paddle of MLP, the only paddle custom fit for your grip. Knock Around, the official sunglasses of MLP, quality shades that won't break the bank. Love that. Balling on a budget. Aura Organic, the official nutrition partner of MLP. Transform your health with plant-based nutrition from Aura. And last but not least, Franklin, official, the official ball of Major League Pickleball. The Franklin X40 delivers the best in game flight out of any ball on the market. And now, as always, joined by my co-hosts and counterparts, former pro and Olympic volleyballer, future pro pickleballer Casey Patterson, of course, Father Nature, pickleball fashionista, four-time Survivor contestant. He was a college swimmer, former pro cyclist. What can't he do? Tyson Apostle, back again this week. I am Michelle McMahon, former Division One volleyball player, current sports broadcaster. I, the self-proclaimed pickleball feistiest ginger. We'll see about that with the emergence of new players every week. And, of course, we are thrilled to be joined by the former pro tennis player who reached number 57 in the world on the ATP tour. He was the youngest division one athlete at UCLA at the age of 16. He's based out of St. Petersburg, Florida. He's been playing pickleball less than a year and is already dominating the pro pickleball circuit, which is pretty incredible. We're definitely going to talk about that. He is a player and an owner of the Florida Smash. He is Travis Rettenmeyer. Travis, thank you so much for joining us. We're so thrilled to have you. First of all, I would love to know, like, what's your journey and how you would describe it from pro tennis to how the heck you found the sport of pickleball? Uh, pretty organic, to be honest. Had no intention of ever competing again. Ten years ago, I stopped playing tennis. Do not like tennis. Tennis sucks. Going to go with that. All over the uh, but you know, just by chance, kind of life exploded. Everything was tennis oriented. And pickleball, by chance, at a little local park here in St. Pete, came to me. And I've met you know every friend that I have now. The entire community has kind of embraced me. And so since I went to that park, about a little over a year ago, I'd say maybe a week and a year, I haven't left. Like, if I have a free day here, that's where I am. We're, we're talking trash, we're shooting the breeze, and that's kind of our lifestyle here. Very cool. Uh, why not tennis? Like, why are you so anti-tennis now? I mean, I think it's a – ask any psychologist, have a two-hour conversation with yourself where you're one person and you tell yourself you're awesome, you suck, like – I mean, I think the transition also out of the sport is really terrible. Unlike most sports, maybe you have a team and friends and tennis is so individual. That's what I love about pickle, especially major league pickle. It's like, even though in some contexts it's an individual, individual sport, it feels community oriented. Tennis never felt that way to me. It felt so isolated and your best friend's your enemy. And, you know, also you started really young. It, it's, it's kind of, uh, excuse me, I started really young. It felt more pressure and business and very serious and it's just not my style, you know, it's not, it's not what I want. So pickleball, like we talk trash nonstop. Like the first day I walked into Crescent, I had ladies 50, 60 giving me grief and I was like, oh, this is it. <laughs> this is what, <laughs> so that's what, what brought me into it. And, and now I definitely talk more trash than most, but they get it back, which is good. Good. I, uh, with uh, the huge rise in popularity of pickleball, we're seeing pro tennis names transitioning to the port, uh, to the sport, playing celebrity events. Some are talking about becoming pro. Some have even said, announced that they will enter pro pickleball. What advice do you have to those tennis players that are coming fresh from the sport of tennis into pickleball? Be humble. I was humbled early. Like I thought that I thought they were terrible. You know, I'm looking up their their credentials. I'm like D three tennis player. This guy's awful. I'm going to smoke this guy. And <laughs> there's so much warmth, right? There's so much subtlety that I didn't really respect. So uh, I hadn't been playing much, and I played a tournament with Brian Sherry, I want to say, like a year and a half ago. And I, like I said, I dabbled in the game, but I'm thinking I'm king guy. I'm going to walk in and just smoke these guys. And we played <laughs> Tyson and Diescu. I think we lost like 11-1, 11-0, and I was so bad. I couldn't believe how bad I was. 
And it was like, I I touched a pickleball paddle for like eight months. I was so discouraged. And then, then, uh, like I said, just by chance, I kind of walked into Crescent uh, here in St. Pete and started playing and playing and playing. But uh, yeah, I would say be humble because like a guy like Sam Query walking in, loves Sam, grew up really close to Sam. I don't think, in my opinion, his skills translate very well. I think he'll get there eventually, but as quickly as he claims three to six months, very unlikely. He's going to have to practice a lot to have that as <laughs> close to possible. And I think the odds are he doesn't get there to begin with. But so, yeah, there you go. That's my be humble. Realize that the guys are better than you think, regardless of their tennis background or sporting background. They've hit a lot of those little wiffle balls that we haven't hit. And, and the, the little kitchen line game is, is more difficult than you think. So okay. True. That's crazy. I love that you said that because <laughs> I had a chance to go shoot content of Sam and like Wes on their like day one, like they're announcing like, I'm going for it, right? It was so funny. And right away, you just like the nuance of the kitchen line and the timing of when to like move and reading the ball. Like it's so much different than tennis. When he was playing singles, like against Wes to warm up, dude, he was like hammering balls. I'm like, whoa, this dude's going to be insane. And then we get to the kitchen line and he is, he's like long and he's moving around, but you could just tell like, for me too, that was like the most awkward part of the game. It was like, whoa, this part kind of sucks right now. I want to go back to the end line and like hammer. <laughs> so that transition, it's crazy. I'm sure yeah. A little bit once he plays better players, but he probably hasn't played that many good players yet. So he hasn't seen someone show this and, you know, do that. There's not a lot of that in tennis. It's pretty standard. It's pretty textbook. You know, things are polished. Right. Pickles unpolished. It's, it's ugly almost. You got guys like yeah. Warnick playing. It's like st- <laughs> yeah, dude it, right it's like and one street basketball it's like bro you're gonna show up to a different park and these all guys have all different moves and styles and they all do illegal things that somehow are legal because it's street ball so who knows yeah yeah <laughs> that's so good and you also uh i remember talking to you what probably six months ago maybe uh, around that time travis and you said that the first time you played with pros uh was a real wake-up call to you what specifically can you what information can you give to someone like sam query or one of these other tennis players that's coming in that you viewed firsthand that they can take with them to level up quicker spend a lot of time at the line you know you have to spend an abundance of time at the kitchen line and the, the tough part of that about that is you can't just do it with anyone you certainly you can dink back and forth 50 in a row and get the feel of the ball and that's vital but you really have to kind of see uh how guys juke you and how they trick you yeah and then once you start to get that feel and you spend a bunch of time at the line and now the tricks aren't as tricky then you can kind of feel comfortable and you're not on your heels so you know, there's certain people that I play that I feel really comfortable against. And then there's others that I'm like, damn, man, I don't know what this guy's doing. I don't know what he's going to do. And it takes me a minute. So I would say for Sam, if he really wants to be good, he's not going to have to bang the ball. Like, of course, he's going to strike the ground. He's fine. Right out of the gates, he's probably top 10. But can he be good um, dinking, you know, reacting to the dink? Can he be good uh, reacting to a decal speed up when it looks like he's going to play soft and all of a sudden he plays quick at the right hip. Does he know that the right hip is where they're attacking? Does he know those things? Like, I don't know if he knows them yet and they're going to take time. Yeah. Plus a big I'm... part of like being successful on the pro tour is like, you have to get really comfortable playing against all those top guys a lot of the time, like over and over and over again. Cause all these guys have different styles, but also like, I mean, compared to like play when you went to play tennis or, or even when I'm playing like beach, like I played guys so often, I almost didn't even have to prepare for it because I just knew them. But when you're just entering into that like top tier, these guys are going to surprise you so much. So I love that you say that. You got to play against a lot of different styles of the kitchen line, train with different people all the time. To me, everyone has like three tricks. And if you don't know their tricks, then you're you're like off balance. But as soon as you kind of learn right. their, little, their little tricks of the trade, all right. Like you know Dyeski, for example, as soon as he lays it back, he's going to try to hit you. You just get yeah. out of the way. <laughs> right. I want to segue here to the player ownership dynamic. Um, first, I want to know the scoop on the draft process and and how that came about. But what was your path to owning the Florida Smash? And then what did the draft process look like for you to be involved with that? Like, bring us back through that story of how you got involved with Major League Pickleball. So it was kind of by chance. Uh, 
the guy that I'm closest to, probably the best friend I've ever had, is a guy named Graham D'Amico, who's my co-owner. Uh, you know, he, he really embraced me when I came here, set me up. Like, my life was a disaster. We won't go into detail, but disaster. And he kind of, like, nursed me along like a little bird, you know, like, we're going to get you. You're going to be okay. And so I got in the car one day. We were driving a pickleball, and I heard him on the phone with Brooks. And Brooks was saying, you have an option to buy a team, but you need someone who moves the needle. He didn't have anyone like that. I did. So I contacted those people. They got in contact with Steve. And slowly but surely, uh, we kind of teamed up and, and got together and realized that it was something we really wanted to do. And we were lucky to kind of have a, a few other co-owners jump in with us. So it was really due to Graham and kind of his, his obsession with the sport, which I think is obvious to anyone that knows him. And, um, yeah, that's kind of how it came to be. That's cool. And then how did you decide on drafting yourself? Like, what was that conversation and process like? <laughs> so smart. <laughs> Dude, it's so smart. I'm going to get a lot, of, uh, a lot of love early on, which I'm okay with. And, you know, we were lucky that we got JW with the first pick. And then we got on, we knew we were going to take Lee with around the 12th, got on the phone, thought who would she want to play with after that. And so, you know, for me, it was never a question. Uh, I was just hoping no one else picked me up. You know, like Deckel told me, he was like, I thought about it. He ended up going with Farius, which I love that we smoked him like 21, 12. Or something <laughs> like good, good job, man. Good pick. You're smart. So, um, yeah, I was never intending to draft anyone but myself and playing with JW. I was just lucky. So how would that have worked if another team drafted you? Good question, man. Like conflict. Yeah. Just doesn't figure that one out. I don't know. Does it get awkward with trades? Like knowing your teammates are like, he, this guy could also trade me. <laughs> He's my guy, but he could trade me tomorrow. Oh yeah. I don't want to. <laughs> shoulders entirely, but certainly we haven't had the best outcome with the trades we've made. Definitely some cold shoulders, which I'm sad about because I think we've handled it like a professional, transparent manner. But I get it. People are sensitive and they get hurt. And, and it's not personal at all. It's just that our primary objective is to win. And if we're not winning, then we're going to try something different. And But certainly the, it's, it adds an, a dynamic that I'm a little uncomfortable with. <laughs> yeah, I need the bad guy. <laughs> I never even thought of that before. So if you get traded in major league pickleball or get let go, you harbor resentment for the owners. There's no doubt about it. And why? Uh, because I think people get accustomed to the team that they're on. And they, I think for more, they're concerned that they might get dropped, right? Getting traded is one thing because you know, you're playing. Yeah. Yeah. Dropped is another, because now another team has to pick you up. So uh, I don't really know. Honestly, if, if, hmm. let's just say in theory, I went one in seven in MLP and my team dropped me. Like, I think I'm a big boy enough to know, like, well, I went one in seven. Like, I deserve it. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. I mean, I'm home here. Like, I did great. I'm not going to do that. But, but I understand that you form, and, and that's the hard part for me is I did form bonds with Maggie and, and Lee, for instance, because they were the people that we traded and dropped. And I think they're great people, but for us as a team, as an ownership group, we decided that we thought things were in our interest to do a little differently. We thought Lacey could bring a little more offense, for instance, when we dropped Lee, because Lee is obviously very defensive minded. We thought Lacey would be, uh, maybe lose a few more matches, but also be able to win a few, you know, just kind of because she's mm -hmm. you know, more dynamic. And, and so we make those choices. They're never personal. They weren't in this case, but uh, unfortunately, I think some people get a little upset. I mean, that's just the nature of pro sports, right? As pickleball gets more formalized, you know, like in the NHL, in the MLB, in any pro professional sports league, that's going to happen, right? At the end of the day, it's just a business. It's just. They leave the team, they leave their friends. And I think that was. Right. And, uh, you know, unfortunately, it's, it's the nature of the East. Yeah, that <laughs> that's so <I> good. <laughs> that's it. Usually you uh, get offended when you're insecure and you didn't play well. That's the only time. If I play well and ball out and you trade me, I'm like, oh, I'm good, dude. No, no worries. And even like, you're not going to be insecure. You're just like, ah, cool, whatever. I'll go somewhere else because I know I'm valuable. It's when you, mm. like you said, when you fear your value, you're like, ah, oh no, I'm, I'm going to drop down the minors. Here we go. <laughs> See, yeah, right. Right. <laughs> it's also a weird dynamic. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> 
So let me tell you. So Casey, he seems very adult about what would happen if he got traded. For me, I would make it my life's mission, no matter how many years it took and no matter in what way, for me to get you back. So, like, let's say, like, oh, you trade me or I, you, I don't get picked up anywhere. It's in my head, but I play the long game. All of a sudden, your kid's trying to get into college and can't get in anywhere, and you don't know why. And it's because I somehow sabotaged your entire future, but you're not going to realize till 20 years down the road, and you won't even know it came from me. Yeah, versus <laughs> – because if, if, if I was harboring that kind of resentment, you would definitely know it came from me. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. That's so funny. We're going to get into That's more funny. of that at the end of this because there is some public pickleball feuding oh, going on, nuggets. and we're definitely yeah. talking Gold. about that. But before that, we had an amazing weekend at Dreamland with minor league pickleball. And all I saw all weekend long was the love from the athletes for minor league pickleball. The fact that they knew when their next matches were going to be, that the timing, there was no waiting. Uh, they knew there was no court assignments. And that pretty much rally scoring, most of them voiced, was the future of pickleball. What does minor league pickleball for you as an owner and also as a player mean? Well, I think it kind of broadens our scope, right? Um, it's it's interesting that all the players like rally scoring so much because I think the initial view of the players that play it are like, oh, this is awkward. We don't like this. The rhythm is off. And I was one of those. But then the more that you play it, the more it functions normally. And you think to yourself, well, if I did it like this for six months and someone told me, hey, you're going to do 002 next and 11, I'd be like, what are you talking about? It's the dumbest thing ever. I don't want to do that at all. This makes way more sense. <laughs> So it's, it's just what you're accustomed to. So the fact is that it creates more drama. It's a better product. I like to see that – what I like to see about the minor league pinball watching is how juiced the guys were getting because Graham and I had this conversation the other day. He's like, you're only getting juice during MLP because there's a big paycheck on the line. Like, you're wrong. There's very little to do with that. Maybe that's like a 5 to 10% markup, and certainly you want the cash. But it's about playing with your team. It's about the camaraderie. It's about performing well. It's about, you know, intimidating the guy next to you. That's what makes it fun. That dynamic, that – that, that product that Steve and the team put together, that's what makes it interesting. That's what makes the juice there. So just to see that that's being broadened, and I even saw one, there was uh, an event in Mexico, I think it was like four teams that used the MLP format. The more that that format is broadened and people are using it, then I think it's going to be uh, only more prevalent in our sport, which it should be. I agree. I also think it's better for rec play. Because how much faster would those like courts, let's say, aside from the pro world, like the rec league and all the the, the games, or a, like at a park, you're waiting, you throw your paddle in the whatever the lineup, and it could take 40 minutes till you play again. Where if rally score, it's like you're on time, and it's every 15, 20 minutes guaranteed, right. you know. And so, at least you know the time frame. Right. Which is what they did with our sport. We used to be side out, and they switched to rally because TV needed to know. Look, we have we have a 45 minute chunk. We have to be able to get everything done. And so that's why they changed our the whole format of how we play. Well, that's why Steve is As an, Steve, right? His oh, brand is different. Right. Things out early. Is it uh, as an owner? Are you paying close attention to this? Because I know over half the players have aspirations of playing in Major League Pickleball. Are you looking at this event as an owner, saying who's going to be good for us in a year, in six sure. months? Yeah, I chimed in to watch. I mean, Graham, again, went. He's my counterpart. So he was there supporting the Florida match, watching the Florida, Florida match, making sure everything was in order. And then, actually, I'm chiming in to watch players. Um, what was the guy's name to play with the Cowboy, the boy in the final? You, Garrett, maybe you guys know. But anyway, Yeah, the that, young kid, right? The kid looks sharp. Like, he looks really good to me. I saw him in Houston, too, and I was like, damn, this kid's good. Like, to see him playing at, uh, at the level he's playing, I think he has a chance. And then there were a few others. Obviously, on our team was Austin Jakaitalov. He's a monster. So, yeah, absolutely taking a notice. What are the qualities you're looking for when it comes to, like, evaluating future talent or future fits for your team? Uh, well, because I think MLP format is so different, what I've recognized is it's not necessarily the best players always that win, but who handle the pressure and like the juice the most. People that kind yeah. of get into that format. Uh, and I've seen quite a few buckle. There's a lot of them that just – 
it gets tight and they're the worst thing. <laughs> and it Name names. Like Hewitt, who's just like all of a sudden a monster. And I've never seen him play that way. So you have to, I think, kind of evaluate, does this person like pressure or do they shy away from it? Right. When the cameras are on and the, the stadium's full, sure. are they them? Like, is that when they step up? Yeah. Yeah. I think, uh, it was a huge success. I have no doubt we're going to see more minor league pickleball. One of the other things that is cool about it is that, uh, it, there's not like a, they're not specifying like a gender mix. So you can, you know, so everybody gets to play with everybody and it's solely based on your duper rating, which I think is another beautiful aspect of, of minor league pickleball and the major league pickleball format. Pickleball in general, right? I mean, how often can you go play? And we all know this, but right. that's pickleball. That's so true. Amazing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, we'll definitely see more of that in the future. And, uh, it seems like all of the players that played this event are willing to travel wherever they need to, whenever they need to, to get the feeling they got at minor league pickleball, which is yeah. always great to hear. I saw stories going up on Instagram from players that were just like, I love everything about this. I won't be able to go back to regular pickleball, essentially mirroring the sentiment of all the pros. Yeah. I, mean, I can tell you firsthand after Columbus, I went to Houston. Oh, rough. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Slow motion. <laughs> I don't want to be here. Where before <laughs> So stoked to wake up in, in Columbus, and then well, the courts are nice. And the, uh, well, anyway, yeah, the dynamic is, it's, it's a big difference. Yeah, I'm yeah. excited to see what the future of that brings, and also how that builds Major League Pickleball. Likewise. What's your view in that? Speaking of the future of pickleball, Steve Kuhn's mission to get 40 million players by 2020, what, 30, 30, 40 by 30, whatever the slogan is um what's the biggest need in your mind in order for pickleball to make that jump to get to the olympics to get more paddles in people's hands like what's your vision of where this thing could go Sports, that's the biggest issue uh when i look at st pete for instance if we go to crescent literally monday through friday night and not even saturday sunday like young kids are making it their saturday and sunday night and i say young like 25 year old kids but but they're, they're literally socializing, playing pickleball, but we have 60 people waiting for six courts. It's, it's May yeah. and it's on a, on a really busy day. It's like 80 and it's getting to the point now where we have about four locations here that we play at and they're all full all the time. So that number 40 by 30 to me is really mm -hmm. conservative. I think it's, I think it's going to be more like 80 by 30, honest opinion, just because there's, there's a, we won't kind of give the numbers, but there was an independent study that just came out. I can't release the numbers, but they're far greater than anything that has been projected prior. And, and I think up to now, everything's been relatively conservative. And in my opinion, the only thing prohibiting pickleball from being the largest played recreational sport on the planet is courts. Hmm. Agree. Yeah. It's Cause people are turning away. I mean, I will roll up and I'll go play on the, the four empty tennis courts instead and, and start playing tennis because I can't play pickleball. And we have, well, I don't even play tennis, but what happens in our courts is we have six, and then we have two tennis courts next to us that St. Pete won't turn into pickleball courts because they say they want to reserve it for tennis. And literally people are going over and playing pickleball on the tennis courts. It's like, <laughs> yeah. people here, nobody's there. Nobody's there. Let's just convert them, make it six more, and we're good. But they, they just won't do it yet. I don't know why. Yeah. I even saw here locally that one of the cheapest things you can put in your yard to increase property value is a pickleball court. Makes sense. Like oh if my you want to add value to your house and have room, put a pickleball court in. Oh, for sure. And really so. piss off your neighbors. <laughs> <laughs> That's only yeah. if you have the lights in it. The and future everything. is a sound buffer. The lights and the sound. Yeah. yeah. You need a yeah. fully insulated facility. <laughs> 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 oh man. Travis, what was your reaction to people like Tom Brady, LeBron James, Kevin Durant, Kim Kleisters joining the ownership circuit as a player and an owner? Initial was shock, to be honest. I, I was <laughs> amazed that they had that, that interest and and then to see Brady's announcement how he was kind of so stoked on it and the fact that he plays a little bit. And then I got to talk to Kim in Columbus, who I knew as a kid. And, and she's like, yeah, I play all the time. 
And my first question was like, when are we playing? Let's play. So hopefully she'll play a few tourneys because that would be incredible. And God knows how good she would be if she put a little time in. But, you know, she'd have the same uh, learning curve as someone like Sam or someone else. But, but yeah, I was, I was stunned. I couldn't believe that Steve kind of was able to uh, create that kind of interest. And it looks like it's only building from here. Yeah. Yeah, but, that's uh, crazy. I was just going to say, uh, I was just in that, like, that pickleball thing. And Drew, I mean, Drew Brees flies out for like a eight-hour charity to go play with Matt Manassi just because he loves the game so much. Not only is he an owner, but he's, dude, he's just a huge fan of the game. And he's really good. And so he shows up for eight hours, and then he bounces and flies home. It was like the craziest thing to see how fired up he is just to play at any moment. It's so cool. So, you know, like those guys were probably getting the itch. Durant played a little bit. He's like, yeah, I see it, dude. I understand. I get it. You know, that's cool. Yeah, I agree. What, what are we going to expect uh, from major league pickleball in 2023? What are we going to see that is improved upon from this past season? What are you excited for? I think it's more of the same. You know, I, I, th I don't think there's going to be a, there's been a lot of discussions about an alternate alter, alternative formats, whether it's singles tournaments, doubles tournaments, and then uh, having a team event the last day. I think they're shying away from that as of now, but uh, which personally I kind of hope they do because what makes MLP so unique and so wonderful to me is that team format. You feel like you're in an event. I would hate that event feel to be taken away. Um, but I think you're going to see bigger, better events. I think at Columbus, which was the coolest thing I've seen is we actually had a, a large turnout from the public. There was a really genuine interest in people around the city that wanted to watch pickleball where, you know, maybe at other ones we had more uh, locals that were attached to the sport in some regard or attached to Steve or attached to the club. These were just people, just normal public people. So that, that interest is obviously building. And I think as we have six events, that are going to be larger and larger at better venues. Like the venues look great for next year, beautiful locations. It's just going to improve, only improve. And with these big names coming in, what are they going to do for Major League Pickleball? Is that going to be some of the garnering the public's interest in showing up to these events? Yeah, and I, I think it's on them, right? Uh, if obviously, they're just kind of grabbing a little crumble and they go away, it, it doesn't do much for us. It's, it's a nice sound bite and we all love it. Uh, but I really hope that, that guys like Maverick Carter and, and have a genuine interest in building the sport. And I think that they do just off the initial conversations. And if they do and they use their resources appropriately, then, you know, we're, we're looking at the things that we need, like sponsors, TV rights, uh, and, a, and, a, and a real explosion of the sport, which, which I think we're on that track. And MLP is certainly the, the best product by a country mile. So why wouldn't they want to get behind it? Why wouldn't they want to take a product that has such incredible growth and will be the highest played records for export in the world? And I can see the envy on Casey's face. Travis, can you help <laughs> Casey carve out a path for his future <laughs> as a professional pickleball player? No. What does he need to do? Have you seen him play? What does he need to change? How do we get Casey there? Stop it. Did he just say no? <laughs> <laughs> Listen, Travis already said he's looking for players that. You were better than I thought. I appreciate it. Thank you. I, I just add to, to my like to my pitch is that you did say earlier you're looking for players that like they like to step up when the cameras are on in the stadium. Like there's people around. Like that yeah. to me, that's the only time I can actually turn the switch on. So that's just you know I'm gonna keep grinding, getting better. But remember that when. It's game time. That's where I'm most comfortable. That's huge, Casey. I'm going to keep that in mind because I'm sure you yes. have that. That's big. All right. I got you. Yeah. Oh, just chipping away. I'm, I'm getting closer. Yeah. Right, dude. I got to go win that. I'll prove myself. Yeah. I will earn my stripes. I know how it works. Right? Yeah. Yeah. That, see, exactly. Yeah. It's a little late for that now. I can't compete with the Bradys and Durants and LeBron. I know. We should have bought a team last year, <laughs> I know. Casey. Holy I think thing. we could have done it together. Yeah. Right? right? Now we're too, now we're small potatoes. Uh, <laughs> Travis, uh, you said you've seen Casey play. What does he need to change about his game to get uh, there? Everything. I watched a little bit of you and Sam and Wes battling it out. Uh, some hand speed, play a little upright, maybe got to get a little lower. But you're tall, right? What are you, like 6'6 six, six or something? 
Yeah, six six. <laughs> yeah. Disadvantage as well. So it is right. I feel like the same. Yeah. Crouching positions, but I yeah. have to watch a lot more to give an honest assessment, which I will. I feel like I, you know, I know that there's, I don't know if uh, Tyson's ready to start talking about this, but it's the one thing that I want to talk about the most because these are the same kind of a things that would happen to me on the, in the beach court because people think, oh, dude, I could hang, bro, whatever. And I'm like, dude, I will bet any, any sort of, any amount of money that makes you uncomfortable right now to play you right now, guaranteed in front of everyone. Because I know I will destroy you. And so I know that's been all I've been thinking about because I've been so fired up. You're on this podcast. I'm like, yes, we got to talk to Travis about the bet. We Let me talk. set it up. Yes, yes. Line it I'll, up. I'll lay it all out for our <laughs> listeners here who maybe haven't been following along on social media. So there is a blog, a pickleball blog in the pickleball universe called NML. Uh, what is it called? NML Pickleball. NML Pickleball, yeah. And there are, I think, I believe two people. And they're mostly anonymous, but people know who they are now. I'm assuming, Travis, you know who they are. And they had some words about Travis's play. And do you want to recite exactly what they said, Travis? Uh, like the I mean, mean tweet? I don't think I can recite it, but I can give you like a general scope. It started with the Let's hear it. Top, a top 25. And I don't mind that you write out a top 25. Do your research. Do it appropriately. And it was so poorly done. And the, the, the lineup was so bad that I just couldn't help but comment on it. I was like, guys, <laughs> I'm that you do this, but do it correctly. Take your time. Like there was something in there like, I'm too new and I don't have experience. It was like, oh man, with all due respect, like not to toot my own horn, but played a lot of tennis at some pretty big tournaments. Like I'm not sh scared of the APP Houston. I, I promise you. I'm fine. <laughs> and so it started with that. And then during NLP, you know, something about like, we can't win unless JW wins his mixed match because I never win mixed. It was like, okay, again, wrong. Like one more match is in mixed with then JW did in Newport. So like, again, do your homework. So I just said something like, uh, maybe text them and said like, in your mom's basement, are you typing this out? Uh, <laughs> Uh, if you're gonna if you're gonna talk trash at me, like at me, hundred k, I could beat these guys two v one. And they went wait, there. you? They replied like, well, we don't have that kind of money. Uh, we don't have that kind of money to buy a team and draft ourselves. And again, I was like, ask your mom for a loan. I'm sure she'll give it to you. <laughs> Listen, yeah, she paid for your cell phone that you're text messaging and tweeting with. She can pay for a loan. Yes. <laughs> Let's get to it. So, uh, shockingly. Two weeks later, I get something that they're accepting the bet. I was like, oh, amazing. A hundred grand. A hundred grand. I was just talking trash, but I was stoked when I saw it because I was like, oh, easy one. And so. <laughs> Wait, exactly. and the bet, the challenge was that you could beat them by yourself with against those two. So a 2v1, you being alone, and a hundred K. And they accepted. And. And I remember they posted like some screenshot that were like, we're accepting. Let's see if he his, he puts his money where his mouth is. And you immediately were like, we're right doing away. this. Yeah. Done. Yeah. Put my name on the check. Easy. Yeah. Let's go. But it's going to be fun as hell. I intend to talk so much trash. Like it's going to be scary. Because gonna yeah. be when so is it happening? When and where? Preliminary date December seventeenth at Ferg Sports Bar in St. Petersburg. Ferg is the largest. Amazing. They can house a ton of people, and and we plan to do it up. Like we're going to have people getting hammered, people getting rowdy, and I think that these guys yes. are going to be like, whoa, what did we yes? Get? This is oh my gosh, that is I'm going to come awesome. You need to live them. stream this. Oh. Yes, oh, we are. So, as a note. Major League Pickleball is not behind this, is not backing anybody. This is Travis by himself versus NML Pickleball for 100K. Oh. Uh, what is the format here? What are we going to do? I think we're doing – so we're working on the details right now because this is only a few days ago that these guys you know, took the bet. But I think the format is going to be three out of five games, rally scoring, 10-minute intermission between each game because let's be honest, it's singularly – running for five games is a, a lot of running against two dudes. So I'm going to have a little break in between each game. So I get a little reprieve 
and and it also makes the event worth going to because it's long enough and interesting enough that we can have hopefully a good match but i don't expect it yeah well let's do some pre-ticket events too like uh you guys are the main event uh get me out there with uh jw and then put casey out there with uh uh, somebody a lot weaker than JW is essentially what I'm getting at. Put it in my favor. Yes. <laughs> You're going to play that plus. <laughs> I can talk enough smile. trash for both of us. I can talk enough trash for everybody on the court. Believe me. Like you think this guy's been on reality TV like 10 times without being able to talk trash. That's like my bread and butter. Oh, that's awesome. How are these yeah. guys going to come up with um, 100K, though? If they're saying you're talking about money, I'm concerned you're not going to get. Yeah, I want, I want like the treasure yeah. chest where it's like you can see it, it's physically there. So I know that he's, he's making decent money, but I, I think that they're going to stake some of it out. You know, I think that's what the, the reality is. I think they have a couple of backers, which I'm not thrilled with because, like, are you putting your own balls on the line? Yeah, it minimizes yeah. it a little bit, the risk. Yeah. Like, have the guts to just put it out. You want to accept the bet, do your money. Uh, right. But with that said, I was like, all right, if you're going to stake it out, then I might put up 75 and have my buddies who are getting hammered say, hey, two grand, three grand, four grand, whatever they yeah. themselves, just so we get a little bit more of a mix, you know? And and, and that's what I want. Like, if, if I get anything out of this, 100 grand, great, I don't care. But, but I want rowdy. Like, I want a night that I remember, that the city remembers, that pickleball was like, holy smokes, these guys are insane. Yeah. Right. Yes. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. Well, Travis in poker, I don't know if you're a poker fan at all. They have uh websites where you can go and buy percentages right. of professional and then you feel connected to their performance, which is what you're going to get if you're selling little chunks uh, of yourself off to the people in the audience, you're going to the audience is going to go berserko. And and we're trying to figure out how we can not open up gambling necessarily, but let people take a stake in it and then maybe make some little side bets on their own because the layman doesn't know, right? They think like two on one, no chance. I even had people at Crescent, they're like, he's going to play the two on one, that's stupid. And Graham's always like, stupid for who? It's like, for him. It's like, no, 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 wrong. No, you're wrong. Yeah. And, and it takes a minute for people to realize like, oh, it doesn't matter that it's two on one. The guys are four fives. It doesn't matter. So, um, yeah, and the only people watching him play are randoms at the park randomly for yeah. rec play, not thousands of people and TV. <laughs> I think they're going to be way tired. Like, I'm going to be tight. For sure, I'll be nervous early, but they're going to be tight as a drum. Yeah, for sure. So, <laughs> this is awesome. Yeah, have you given them too much time to prepare if it's uh, a month and a half away? They can have 10 years. <laughs> Ten years, and I'm going to use a wood paddle. <laughs> yeah. Well, man, I'm going to try my best to be there, Travis. I already have been uh, DMing you saying the second I saw it, I was like, I'm coming out. I'm going to be there. I want to take part in it, whatever I can do to make it the rowdiest fun. Uh, that people can have that have been following this drama as it unfolds. Um, yeah, I'm really, really excited. <laughs> and I know like the whole pickleball world is excited too. Like this is a fun thing to watch. And I think like it's one of those things that's needed. Like, okay, we got a grudge match. You took it to the exact perfect direction that it needed to go with that yeah. online field. For sure. Like let's take it to the court where you're going to talk about my pickleball. Then let's go to a pickleball court. Are we going to see more grudge wait. matches in the future? Oh, I, dude, this would be huge. <laughs> oh, for sure. That's easy money, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it sounds like you've already got <laughs> round two lined up already. Yep. If, uh, Let's go. I know, I know Tom Brady is an avid listener of the podcast, so he should hear the message from you, Travis. <laughs> So very cool, very great stuff. Uh, I cannot wait to keep watching that. I can't wait to also see minor league pickleball unfold as they add more stops and major league pickleball for 2023. Um, 
anything else before we go, Michelle or Casey or Travis? We can't end it on a better note than that. <laughs> right? <laughs> go smash. I think I'm going to be Travis for Halloween. I just figured out. And I'm going to have my boys play me. I'm going to film it and be like, hundred. I'm going to like all of your, all the money in your piggy bank right now. And just crush them down, dude. Piggy bank's open. Right? Like open them up. I'm going to play you boys right now. Best of five games. Dude, I would, oh, and it would happen. Awesome. That's could the you, that's the level I have to play though, like ten year olds, and then I could be Travis. <laughs> could you get all four of your five kids to play against you? So you got four kids running around yeah, on one side of the court. Just fill the court. And I'm just tattooing them. I'm like, I'm Travis. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Well, I want to thank everybody for being here. Thank you so much, Travis. Don't forget to like, follow, subscribe, leave a review. All of that stuff helps us grow, and you can do your small part to grow Major League Pickleball and uh, the sport of pickleball in general by uh, giving us just that little morsel of support. Uh, much love. Thanks, everybody. See ya. Thanks for having me. Peace. See ya.